We are now going to start a two-tailed test for a population mean using the test, the t-distribution, because we do not know the population standard deviation. All right, going through this problem, let's read it. We have the fun size of sneakers bars is supposed to weigh 20 grams. Because the punishment for selling candy bars that weigh less is so severe, the manufacturer calibrates the machine so that the mean weight is 20 and 1 tenth of a gram. The quality control engineer in m and Mars, the company that manufactures the Snickers bars, is concerned that the machine that manufactures the candy is miscalibrated. She obtains a random sample of 11 candy bars, weighs them, and obtains the data shown below. Should the machine be shut down and calibrated? Because shutting down the plant is very expensive, she decides to conduct the test at a 1% level of significance. Now, reading this particular information, we have to determine, is the null hypothesis going to be one tail or two tail? And the reason we're making a two tail is because she wants to determine if the machine is not calibrated correctly. So if the mean weight is significantly greater than 20 and 1 tenth or significantly less than 20 and 1 tenth, she would recalibrate the machine, which means that we have to have a situation where we're going to have a two tail test that we're going to use not equal to for the alternative hypothesis. Therefore, the null hypothesis should read that the mean should be equal to the 20 and the 1 tenth, which is the number that we have for the mean of all candy bars. And therefore, the alternative hypothesis is going to state that the mean has to be not equal to the 20 and the 1 tenth of a gram. So we've completed step one. We have equality versus inequality two-tail test. Now we take a look at the level significance, which is a 1% level of significance. And in order to compute the T statistic, the very first thing we have to find is the X bar, the mean of the group of 11, the standard deviation. And we are going to state that the distribution is approximately normal. So therefore, we will be able to conduct a test. So the first thing we're going to do is take the average. And we have the pieces of information. And we have the average is 20 and 3 tenths. We want the standard deviation for the sample. So we have stdev.s because it's a sample standard deviation. And let's say we did not know how many pieces of information there were. So we're going to go to the formula that says we're looking for the count. And let's go back there so we can get it. And we click on the count and we want the count of that particular number. Now going through that information, let's do that. Okay, so now we have that. And we take a look at the distribution. And when we compare, look at this, we, uh, we graph it, we're going to notice that we have an approximately normal distribution. So since we're using the t statistic, we want degrees of freedom, which is equal to n minus 1, which gives us 10 degrees of freedom. And before we can calculate the T statistic, we have to find the standard error. In other words, the standard, the standard deviation for all groups of size 11. So we take our standard deviation, and we divide that by the square root of the sample size, which is 11. And we have our standard deviation. And now we can calculate the T statistic for this group. And remember, we're going to do it the same way we calculate the z value. So we start with open parentheses. We take the x bar minus the mu, which is the 20 and 1 tenth. Divide that by the standard deviation for all groups of size 11. And the t value is 1 and 41 thousandths of a standard deviation above the mean. Now looking at the x bar, we really are taking the probability that x bar is greater than or equal to 20 and 3 tenths. Now that we have that, we want to go to step 4. We want to find the probability or the p value. So going to our formulas, we go to our statistical formulas, and we're looking for the t, dis2t, because it's a two-tailed test. And the x is the t value. Degrees of freedom, we have 10. And we have calculated that the p-value is 323 thousandths.
Well, step five says we have to compare the p-value, so we're going to copy the p-value, to our given level of significance, which is the 1%. And we want to make a comparison between the two. And we always like to have the alpha to be exactly the same number of decimal digits as the p-value. And it makes it easier to compare. And we see that the p-value is greater than our alpha, which leads us to believe that the probability of getting a sample that is significantly less than the 21 grams does not seem that this is true. So now we're going to state our conclusion. And based upon that information, we're going to say there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the Snickers do not have a mean weight of 20 and 1 tenth grams at the 1% level of significance. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So the machine is not shut down. And basically, this is what the quality control people do periodically in order to be able to determine if the machinery is working correctly or has to be recalibrated.